We're at Sam Rayburn, Texas. Stop number one for the BPT season and uh, excited to get the season started. Incredible Bass Lake. You know, conditions are a little different than what I would expect this week. I guess it's been a mixed reaction to this lake. I don't really understand this lake good. Sam Rayburn's a lake that I've got a ton of history with. It's just an incredible place that I've been fishing really my whole career. Lights. One last quick check over on everything. Should be good. Ready to go? This is part of the life, man. You get up early. I, you know, I live a long ways from most of the venues that we go to. So today we're driving to Texas or working our way to Texas. We're gonna make it to Little Rock. Got to do a podcast for Plano tonight and uh, then we'll make the rest of it down there. But I am so excited. Sam Rayburn's an awesome lake. Got a lot of history there and uh, the big one should be biting. Over my career, how many times that I've done this? I've made this trip a, a lot of times. Leaving before it gets light and driving until it gets dark part of the job. Beginning of a long day. I got Brandon, he's filming me, our stuff for uh, King of Bass. We do a little series we do on, on the road, so. Well, very good luck. It's one of the What is kind of bad <laughs> One thing on these long drives, you know, you never know, especially early in the year like this. When you're coming from Michigan, you can Man, I've been through all kinds of snowstorms, ice storms, so having a thunderstorm or a tornado watch like this, it's not a big deal. You know, today with you know, phones and satellite imagery and that, you can, uh, you can really be a lot safer and track your travel. 12 hours down. Good to see you, man. Scott. How we doing, man? Awesome. Thank you. You're nice welcome. Nice to meet you. You bet, man. Good, how you doing? Good, buddy. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Look at there, right off the bat. He's a smart guy. So Brandon and I drove all day long, and we are stopped down in Little Rock. So tonight at 7, it's Wednesday night, it's Plano's College of Bass again. So we are going live at 7 Central on Facebook. Thank you. We've got a great show planned tonight, but we got Brian Latimer on tonight, so it's going to be a great show. So join us live here just in a little bit, 7 Central. Just trying to get my last Instagram story to load. I think it just did, Brandon. We're knocked down 12 hours today. Uh, I've got six more tomorrow. So this week's kind of cool because you know, I got Brandon Ozarzak. He's uh, one, of the, one of the film guys that we work with at Strike King and Lose. And we're doing kind of a, a really neat series called Kings of Bass, which is kind of behind the scenes. So he's filming me on, on, the, on the College of Bass right now. Yeah, you can see. Here, step in here. See, see, there's, there's Brandon. It's, it's gonna be fun, you know? Whataburger is a Texas staple. Dr. Pepper and Whataburger, that's both the things you gotta have when you come to Texas. Yeah, I'm, I'm about three minutes away. 18 hours later, we are here. So we've got to do, uh, you know, some photos, headshots and things like that. They do some truck and boat photos. It's the first regular season event of the year. So getting all that media obligations out of the way and then we'll get ready for prep and uh, start practice tomorrow. Let's go do this. You don't have a mirror in here to you know, make sure I'm all fixed up. Is everything. Truck or no? There's Sprague here if you want to shoot anything with him. So here we are right here. This is the infamous local favorite Jeff Sprague. Look, evidence right there. Cannot hide it. It's <laughs> everywhere in my boat. I mean, this is when I thought it wasn't gonna make it. I'm, I'm just glad that the grass is green and it's warm compared to home. I got to get a fishing license. Fishing license? Yep. Everywhere you go, you got to have a fishing license. So uh, Texas is a place we come to a lot, so I always buy an annual license here for sure. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you all so much. Yeah. So you start saying y'all in Texas.
this is a place that I have a ton of history. Uh, you know, I've fished here lots of times over the years. You know, early in my career, I set the five fish record for BASS tournaments with a 31 pound 11 uh, ounce stringer. So same time of the year, totally different lake conditions, but this lake has, you know, a lot of big fish. It should be a great week. It's a lot of fun. It's been fishing really good. It's one of the best lakes in the country, and it's gonna be a great episode of Kings of Bass. Sam Rayburn's one of those lakes that, you know, it's iconic to bass fishing, you know. It's just an incredible place that I've been fishing really my whole career. It's uh, the second day of practice, cold morning. I mean, you can see your breath. It's, it didn't get above 55 yesterday, and today it's, you know, gonna start out. But the later in the week, it's gonna warm up. So we're dressed for it this morning. We got one more day to, uh, to find them. This lake is just an uh, incredible fishery, but there are, so many people out here fishing. I was I was blown away by uh, the amount of pressure on the lake right now. <coughs> it's Texas. It's spring. It's time to get them. Dude, just like every ramp, there's some kind of tournament going on. 14,000 clubs and stuff like that. It's one of the bass fishing capitals there is, and I mean, we're here kind of at the side ramp, and it's already almost full. Saturday in Texas, people gonna go fishing. Foggy sign. It was busy, busy at the ramp, so I'm like, oh. okay, love you. Bye. So we are out first thing in the morning again here on Lake Sam Rayburn for day two of practice. I got Brandon Ozarzak with me for Strike King Lose. We are filming an episode of Kings of Bass for them. You'll see it coming out soon, so stay tuned. Hopefully we find them today. Another one. That's not a big one. They're here though. Where the big ones should be in the center of these ditches and catch tons like this. I ain't gonna cut it. I fished my first tournament here, I think it was 1992. It was a Bassmaster Invitational and I came down really the beginning of March and the lake was really on a, I had a huge rain and it was rising really fast. The first day I ever seen the lake, the water was like four feet above the bushes. So it was just the tops of them were underwater and I could just take a spinner bait and just throw it over the top of those bushes. And I mean, I caught a hundred bass and caught probably 50 over four pounds. The first day I ever seen the lake and thought it was unbelievable. And then, you know, two days later, a cold front hit when it dropped into the thirties and the wind blew out of the north and you couldn't buy a bite. It's just the way it goes, you know, it's the lessons you learn. But over the years, you know, it's, it's been a good lake. Our electronics are a lot better and guys are much better at, at figuring out and finding them. So it's, it's made it more challenging. This week will be a lot tougher to, to find a group of, of fish. It's, it's cold and you know it's going to be warming up and the, the fish should make a big push back to the bank. They did a week ago and they just absolutely uh, had some unbelievable weights, but now it's cold and they've kind of backed off again. We're just trying to find where they're at. This is the ones you're looking for right here. I got a boat right over here by me. That's why you crank them drains right there. Six pounder all day. A pretty good one there. Little Strike King Series 5 right in the center of this little ditch going through here. After the practice that I've had, if I could be able to pull this thing off and actually win here, of course, any win is spectacular. You know, I've been fortunate over my career to have a lot of success, so I appreciate every single one. But I'd really like to get one on the Major League Fish and Bass Pro Tour. Get to watch me cook. How about that?
Is it cold out there? Yeah. Sharita said she didn't sign up for these 30 degree mornings. <laughs> but we talking about practice, man. Practice. Not the game, practice. Probably get some tips on how I cook an omelet roll. That was my brain yesterday looking for fish. See that? That's Andy's brains. There's like 700 boats out there. It was a 500 boat high school tournament today. I had an old man one time practicing with me. It was at Champlain, he said, how come we don't never see no boats? I said, well, Tony, if I find them out here, I'll do good in the tournament. I'll have them to myself. He sat there a minute, he said, huh, I'd rather fish around some boats and catch something than fish over here and not catch nothing. I said, well, I guess you got a point, Tony. Whoo, that's cold on my noggin. Whoo, just trying to put a lose hat on for y'all. About frozen. Look, this right here, look at that. That's ice in Texas, I'm grumpy. Make me grumpy. Some of our tournaments we fish no practice and, and you're, you're just a lot more prepared. Or you make what you got work and it usually does. Sometimes I feel like I don't even need to practice. Some you feel like you need to practice a lot. Some you feel like you need to make sure you practice them late. This one I'm confused. First time I was ever out here, I was fishing the Elite at St. John's. Did good there, so I didn't get here. I only practiced half a day. First time I'd ever seen the lake. I went out there and I got comfortable quick. Well, let me back up. Practice, I never got comfortable. First day of the tournament, I never got comfortable. Second day of the tournament, halfway through the day, I got comfortable and I felt like I knew what I was looking for. All that to say, 50% of my time on Sam Rabin, I'm thoroughly confused. I ain't warmed up fast, didn't it? It's Sam Rayburn for you. Hey, you smell that bacon? You know, I, I, I seen something Edwin put out the other day, just how a professional could care less if he caught one in practice. I mean, we could. Little black bird is usually a good indicator of grass. Coops. Wow, ain't no way that water dropped that fast. This is what you expect on Sam Raven. A lot of moving around in practice. Yeah. There's just so much, I mean, look through there, there's so much for fish to be in. It's really hard to pinpoint them. That's what I need to do is pinpoint them. I'm still semi looking for something different. I mean, I can get out on there's some grass flats, community holes. You can get on if all else fails. But you just always do better if you can find something by yourself. The goal for the season is, is to get off to a good start. I, like I said, I've done that the first two seasons of the BPT is to get off to a good start and that's the goal. It don't always happen, but that's the goal is to always get off to a good start. So my goal for this event is to get off to a good start. I ain't got that feeling, that vibe. I just ain't feeling it. Practice pretty much sucked for me. <laughs> so like, hmm, what, what's the math on that? Three quarters of my practice was bad, really bad. And then a quarter of it was Really good. Practice to me is just looking for a home. Where can I call home during the tournament? I'm just a visitor today. <laughs> but I gotta find somewhere I think it's got some fish. You know, for me, practice was really pretty tough. You know, I've, I've caught a few good fish here and there, but I haven't found like one 
solid pattern or one solid area or anything like that. Found an area that has a lot of numbers in it today, but there's, there's just not a lot of big ones. And then I caught a few big ones, but there's just not a lot of fish there and there's not a lot of potential there. So not the practice that I was hoping, you know, I mean, you, when you get done with practice, you want to be there where you're, you feel like you have everything figured out and it's just like, hey, I'm going to go execute my game plan. And here, I know it's going to be changing thousands of locals out there and it's, it's March and I'm going to kind of mix it up between two or three different areas and two or three patterns. When the males move up, the females won't be far behind. So to start out with, for sure, right out the gate, I'm gonna be kind of fishing an offshore pattern where we can ho hopefully get multiple bites. I'm living the dream. Just living the dream. This is what you call organized chaos. So I'm straightening it out. Really just need to catch one fish per bait and I'll be good. Cause I sucked yesterday. I'm so head deep in tackle, I need a scuba diving suit so I can breathe. Red eyes. I bet Vandom's catching one on it. Y'all like my tackle box? Zip locks. See that? I take all my hooks off my bait. Store them like that. Half the people say I'm a genius for doing this, and the other half say I'm an idiot. I'm gonna side with the geniuses. Look how many baits I can store in there. It's unbelievable. In a tournament, to me, if you're gonna, before I throw the bait, I'm gonna put new hooks on it, so uh, no more untangling hooks and all that jazz. I just do that right there. Be what it's gonna be. What a zoo, what a zoo, what a zoo. Honestly, I hadn't even tied on many baits yet because I'm still debating on what I'm gonna do. Um, but I pretty much took all morning, it took me like four hours to decide. The area I fished the first day, um, I know fish live there, but man, raven fishing is so daggum tough. And uh, I could go back in there, fish all day. It's probably my best chance to catch a big one, good for heavy hitters. Uh, it's a lot of offshore grass, but it's just tough. So what I've decided to do is go somewhere completely different. I, I've had success in the past when, when I just just start over. If I have a bad day, just, just start over. It's on the opposite end of the lake. It's a place that I hope hadn't got a lot of pressure because, man, people fish around here and it's, there's so much pressure on these lakes. I want to get away from the crowd. I'm living the dream. So we're just about to get started here. It's the first morning of competition. You know, after two days of practice, you know, I've still got a lot of questions to be answered. So cold again this morning, 39 degrees. And I know things are changing. It's gonna be warm and sunny and not a lot of wind today. So it should be a whole different afternoon. We in Texas, it ain't supposed to be this daggum cold. I don't know what to think. I just don't. This, this is one of them you just really don't know what what's gonna happen going into it. I got up at 3.30 this morning, not because the fishing's that good, just because it's the first one of the season and I'm excited. She purring. Looking down at the rafters, I 
had to sun these boys, can't leave them bastards. A lot of dudes, just some undercover actress. I don't fall for it, I'm privy to all your tactics. Yeah, so try again, it's time to take a vitamin. Yeah, and vitamin, welcome to the lion's den. And I'm Mufasa, big boss in charge of... It's been tough. It was... Uh, surprisingly slow and that's what I expected after the practice that I had so you know I feel good to be in third place after the first day um, things are changing quickly and that's gonna be the key here this week is is adapting as the week goes on hey the days over it was tough on me I caught a lot of fish just couldn't get them two pounders it, it was frustrating um, but I got a lot of bites, caught a lot of fish, and, and just couldn't make it happen. I just got a lot of thinking to do, but right now I'm going to eat some crawdads. That's going to make all my day better. I'm going to eat them crawdads because the bass did today. I'm gonna get them. Uh, I'm gonna get them. Worcester, a little bit of this on there, and then hot. Is it hot sauce? Hot Yeah, and mix it all. You're good. The trick to these crawdads is you peel that first little corner and then give it a push, and you got the whole thing just like that. It's like I've done it a million times. You got you a tray full. Huh? You want some? Oh, I'm gonna get some more. My favorite part is the corn. Is that a corn? You the man. How does that feel, man? Look, traded you the biggest yeah. crawdad I had. <laughs> How about that? You traded me the biggest crawdad? Yeah. something different. We're going a uh, uh, different direction. So starting over on tournament day, another comeback. I'm not sure if I'm going to have more of them in my spots or I'm going to have to go all the way to the bank. Hopefully we can have another solid day and move on to the next round. Make something happen and it didn't happen. It just, just one of them weeks where it didn't never click for me. Caught too many rats. Caught a bunch of liars. That's what I did. Every time I would catch one, he'd lie to me. I couldn't duplicate it. So, my summary for the week is Sam Rayburn is full of liars because all them bass lied to me. That's the summary. I'm out. I'm going to South Carolina. How about it, Andrew? It was a dream, baby. Huh? Thinking about them crawfish. So I'm gonna drive so fast. Well, today was a, a real shocker, you know. I mean, it's definitely very humbling every time you go out in the water and you think you got it figured out. But, you know, I went out there today and conditions had really changed from all that rain and those storms and the wind that we had. It ripped a lot of the grass up and uh, it really changed the area that, that I had a lot of confidence in. You know, I went and practiced quite a bit today, looked at a lot of different areas, found a couple areas that, that looked pretty promising and, and I saw, you know, I was pretty solid on the score tracker. so. I I really made a couple of big moves, uh, just just looking, trying to, to find something real special for, for Thursday's knockout round. And you know, you got you got to fish where you know they live in, in the right habitat and uh, where these fish should be coming to. So, looking forward to Thursday, and hopefully we can have a great day then. This is the knockout round, so everything goes back to zero. We're all starting from a clean slate. Now we've got 38 guys out there vying for the top eight spots. This is the kind of mornings that you kind of dream of this time of year. One of the 
challenging things when you have is so many uh, times and experiences on a lake like Sam Rayburn. You know, in my mind, I knew that uh, that offshore deal and, and those ditches and drains was a, a great previous pattern, but you have to fish the conditions. You know, as it got warm, I knew those fish were going to the bank. I should have just locked into it a little, a little sooner, especially when that pattern went away. I, I just should have just really focused on it and, and committed 100% a little earlier. But it's easy to say after the fact, you know, I mean, I, uh, I learn so much every single time out. I mean, I've been doing this for a really long time and every single day I'm still learning like I'm a little kid.